we're at HealthTap right now, and their system lets you talk to doctors and get personalized health information that's quite different for you than it would be for me, you know, because I just uh, got, had my physical and I'm trying to learn about some new things. Your system will be quite different. We're here at HealthTap today to learn more about what they do. Who are you? Uh, glad to have you here. My name is uh, Ron Goodman, and uh, I am the founder and CEO of uh, HealthTap. And uh, I'm also an you know, advisor and invest investor in early stage health company, and especially interactive health company. I started my uh, journey right across the street at Stanford here, and doing research in personalized health, and try to understand uh, people's health and well-being, what can help them get more engaged in their health, understand their health better. And uh, you know, with a great multidisciplinary group of graduate students and faculty, we went on and tried to understand people, but also build something that uh, is still engaging people at Stanford. You know, seven years after. Uh, we went to build a company, uh, grew it to become one of the largest health sites on the internet, uh, sold it a couple of years ago, and now we are here uh, trying to uh, revolutionize health and well-being. Yeah. Why do we need a health, another health company? Because it seems like there's a bunch of different uh, health companies that either help you find information or help you track your weight. I mean, we have the Withing Scale that tracks all that stuff. Why do we need you? Awesome question, and I think that the answer should not come from me, it should come from the research that was done by Pew Internet like a year and a half ago that shows that the more than half of us think that the information that uh, we find on the Internet in health is, is useless, is of no help at all. And uh, that's a problem because if 80% of us use the Internet for health today, and most of us think that it's useless, what, the, what we found on the Internet, then the opportunity is really huge to help people. Yeah. Uh, we think that trust is key for that. We think that personalization is key for that. And we are there to, here to really revolutionize health and well-being, really transform this industry by bringing personalization, by bringing physicians into the conversation, and we're confident that we can do it better than anyone else. Yeah, usually when we start, uh, when average people go and look for health information, it's because their doctor told them to go look, like I just had my physical and my doctor said, hey, you're, you're uh, setting yourself up for diabetes if you don't take care of yourself, and uh, he, sh she told me to go and look for uh, certain kinds of things, diets and exercise. Right. Um, but we go out there and we find all this noise, I guess, right. and we don't know who to trust, right? How does your system help us get better information? Yeah, I mean, f first of all, bring back the physician to lead the health conversation, right, online. So physicians are not in the health conversation right now. And we are, for the first time, we're able to bring now more than 2,400 physicians, so 2,400 physicians that come to HealthTap and help answering questions, create tips, create guides, endorse one another so it can help you find who are the physicians that are more trustworthy, help you find physicians by the content and the information and the knowledge and the wisdom that they share online rather than by the decor in their waiting room when you go to a, one of these rating sites for physicians. So it's all yeah. about quality, it's all about trust, and it's all about writing the right algorithm that will optimize both to answering your questions but also to give it to you from a trusted resource that you can actually go and find first on the internet but then see in the real world. And I th we believe that that will revolutionize health and well-being. Yeah, my dad just had a kidney transplant so he's been through this uh, whole system pretty, pretty thoroughly. Uh, so somebody in that uh, condition, what, what can they get out of this system and what would they see on the screen when they first sign in and say, hey, I just had a kidney transplant what, and they want to learn more about what they should be doing after uh, the, after the, the surgery. Absolutely. So it can be driven by a question that they have, like a very specific question. They have an interest or a concern. You know, they can come up all the way from a, a symptom that they have or, or actually a, a specific question about the medication or in this case about a certain procedure, right, uh, or a certain condition. And they can come there and share with us what the question is. And we are doing a lot of the work in the back end using technology to really understand. So we have a very extensive ontology, for example, that understands really well what you put in the box when you ask a question and help you navigate through uh, an engine that we build to the information that pertains to you, right? Yeah. And there you can find a page that doesn't only have information or articles and things like that like you could find before, but we actually help you find answers from physicians 
physicians. We help you fund data that was created by physicians or by research, right? So at the end of the day, you don't only help, help you personalize the health information that you find, but also make you find information from people that you can trust, from physicians that you can trust. Yeah, so let's say uh, a woman lear learns that she has breast cancer or, or a guy learns he has uh, prostate cancer like Steve Jobs learns. How, is there a community there to help us deal with the shock of learning such news? And then it, is there a way for us to take it forward and, and do, and make something positive happen in our lives. Yeah, absolutely, and, and the, the community though is a health community which is very different than you know, a Facebook community or a Quora community because health is different. So health, you want to have privacy, you want to have trust, and you have to have a guided conversation because again, l the blind leading the blind is not going to take you anywhere, right? A yeah. bunch of people chatting around what they think is right is not going to take you anywhere. On the other hand, getting some support from people like you is something that is really good. So what we're doing is we're adding to the mix of the community, first of all, the physician, right? So there are a bunch of physicians there that help you get oriented and make sure that the conversation and all the content on Health Tab comes from physicians or is approved by physicians. So the conversation goes in the right direction so you can trust it, but you can find other people like you that they can choose to be anonymous so they can be a member in the community and still share information without revealing their real identity, which is important in health because there are certain things in health that you don't want to share with the rest of the world. But you still want to find this person who's like you to communicate with you. So we Especially with some of the shunned diseases uh, yeah. surrounding uh, sexually transmitted diseases yeah. or something yeah. like that. But even not only that, I think yeah. even if you just have a condition that you don't want to share with your coworkers or with other people, you, you don't want any, everyone to know about it. So you can go and create a screen name and again interact with people in a, in a guided conversation by physicians and then find other people who are like you and share the information with them in a, in a trusted environment where your privacy is ke se kept well and, and then the conversation is actually makes sense in a way that uh, that will actually guide you to understanding your health better. So the three things basically that we that we help you do is orientation, action, and support. Yeah. So what's going on with me? You know, what can I do about it and who can help me? And help can be part of help can be support. Yeah. What you're talking about, which is you can get it either from physicians and especially physicians who are Li oh, sorry, practice ne next to where you live, so you can actually go and see them in the real world, not just read about their information, but also find other people who experience it. And it doesn't matter where they live, but you may but want to communicate with them about uh, what you're experiencing and see what they have. Yeah, I, I just had a physical a week ago, and everything is still paper in my doctor's office. Uh, there's no digital health record yet. Uh, right. we're, we're moving to that. Some hospitals have digital and some doctors have digital health records. Can the people who have digital health records, can they put, can the doctors put their inf information on this or d is it all on the patient to get that information from the doctor and then put it up themselves? Great question. Because there's a lot of HIPAA rules and a lot of rules for doctors to share information. Sure, that's a great question and I think that we need to make the distinction here between an EMR and a PHR, right? So an what? EMR is an electronic medical record, a PHR is a personal health record, right? Okay. EMR is what the doctor keeps in the system itself and it helps them interact with the system. This is what is actually being encouraged now by the government and you know there's a lot of uh, incentives to actually for physicians to adopt these EMRs and we're seeing a nice adoption on this side. PHR is a personal health record that belongs to you. It doesn't sit with your physician. It doesn't sit with your uh, medical institution. It doesn't sit with your insurance company. You actually own it. And it doesn't matter that you, if you change an employer or change a health plan, you control your health. And the interesting thing, the mini meaningful use guidelines that guide who gets the incentive money for adopting EMRs actually has in them one provision that actually uh, makes these EMR vendors put what they call a blue button, right, which allows you as a patient on a click of a button to download all your health information, right, yeah. in an electronic format, right, to wherever you want. And the idea behind it is that eventually you would want to have one place that you as an individual will keep these things where you can then share it with whomever you want. And this is what we're seeing two steps down the road. Not yet, what we're doing right now is we're focusing on the basic interaction between physicians and patients. We're yeah. saying, if we can help you find an answer to a question, if we can bring a lot of physicians to answer a question, we can start the interaction online virtually when it used to happen in the real world and make it more efficient. 
We have a PHR in the background. It's not the main thing that we're doing because no one needs a PHR, right? Yeah. They need answers to questions because they're anxious now. So as you find answers to your question, we collect this information in, 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 in our record that is actually open to you 100%. You can view it, you can access it, you can change things however you want. So everything is transparent to you, full control for you, but we help you store it. If you want to bring information from other places, it's totally up to you. We will keep it for you safe and you can do with it and share with it with whomever you want. Yeah, that's pretty cool. G keep telling me about that PHR piece because I thought that was really interesting. As I was asking questions, it was uh, adding information to my PHR in the background. Right. And I could also go to the PHR and, and add my own information. Tell me a little bit more about some of the tiles that people will see and some of the choices that they'll some of the things that they can add into the system to get better answers. Absolutely, so you have full control over that. So like yeah. if, if you look at other websites today, that, that websites collect information about you to serve you better advertising. So we don't serve advertising. We collect this information for you to serve you better answers, to personalize better information to you. And you have full access to what we're collecting. So there's nothing happening in the background that we don't know what it is and you have full control over it, right? Yeah. And once you do this, it's organized very well in a very simple to understand consumer language around conditions, you know, around treatments, around procedures, tests that you had, and you can see where each and every one of these falls. You can add to it things if you want to. It's very simple. It's like sixth grade, you know, you push here, you just add, you know, like a, let's say you have an allergy and you add it here, it takes about five seconds to add an allergy. It takes also about five seconds to remove anything that you want. So yeah. everything is under your control, very easy to use, but it's not the main interaction. You don't need to fill it out because we collect information about you as you go, as you do your normal internet research that you would do otherwise anyway to collect inf to learn it's before you go to a doctor, it's actually collecting it in the background. So if I ask a question like, what's the latest research on kidney disease? It adds the kidney disease into my PHR? Even better, if you say you have fever, and yeah. we know that you have a history of kidney disease, or I, I don't know if it's relevant to kidney disease, but if you say you have something that you don't even know that is related to a certain condition, but we know in the background because we have a very strong knowledge base, a probabilistic knowledge base that we build on the transition from clinical finding to differential diagnosis to action to outcome. So we know in the background what's related to, uh, to what. There's a very robust ontology and very robust knowledge base in the background. So there are certain things that you're going to add to your health history or just ask questions that you don't know they're related to the next thing that happened to you or the next prescription that your doctor gave you. But we know that. It's very powerful. It happens in the background. And every time that it happens, we're going to ask you a leading question that will help guide you to something that is personalized to you, which no health site can do today. How does Health Tap find, uh, help me find a phys physician? What does it show me on the screen? Absolutely. So first of all, every answer and every tip that the, that the physician creates or every guide that he creates goes to what we call their virtual medical home and sits there under their name. So every time that you look for a question, either you on a search engine or on social media or wherever, and you start finding you know, the, the content, you're going to get to us because of the content that the physician has created. And you find you have a question, you find an answer from a physician, and we optimize first to give you the right answer, but then we actually optimize to help you find a local physician. So That's if great. there's a physician in your locale that answered a question related to uh, something that you're interested in, we're going to point you to them. And then you can discover them by their content, by their wisdom, rather than yeah. by a directory, right? So this is, this is one thing that is very, very valuable. The second thing is, Physicians f to create their medical home where they can send patients before the visit or between doctor visit rather than repeat the same information again and again and again patient after patient. They prefer to send it to their virtual medical home that we've created for them. And they, created, they can either create their medical home by answering questions or writing tips. Yeah. Or they can actually go and see answers that were created by other physicians. And there are, I think, like 17,000 or 18,000 answers that are already answered in the system. Wow. So it's a pretty large number. And instead of recreating the wheel, they can basically what we call endorse or agree with another physician that doesn't yeah. practice close to them, but they still appreciate the answer. What they do by that is two things. A, this answer goes to their medical home discoverable by their patient, but also creates a system of endorsements in the back end yeah. that will help you as a user find which of the physicians, other physicians believe their answers are good. So not yeah. patients voting up, which is, you know, we have a limited capacity to really understand the quality of a health questions, but other physicians know what 
Right, or at least the aggregate. Absolutely, and if it's getting added to their own profile, they really feel pr um, responsible for that information because it affects their reputation, right? So, so more than that, uh, so, so you know, uh, Jeff Rodledge, who is our uh, Chief Medical Information Officer, says that uh, you know, every physician has only one medical license, right? So mm -hmm. they cannot just change the name of the business after a week if they don't like what they did in the past. So their accountability is extremely strong. And we, by the way, accept to the network only physicians that are licensed to practice medicine in the US and they're actually practicing medicine right now. And they need to answer all the questions and make all their endorsement under their name and their medical license. Is this a worldwide service, by the way, or is it just available in the United States? It's available worldwide, but the physicians right now, all yeah. the, the entire network is just US-based physician because we wanted to create the ultimate trust yeah. mechanism. And if every physician on the network, actually, we are testing them, we're going into the record, we check to see that they are who they are and that they're practicing, and only then admit them to the network. They have to apply first. Very cool. Uh, just real quickly, how are you going to make money with this? Building product is number one. Building distribution, so building the, the network, the physician's network, and then the next step is bringing more users to the system. Yeah. Anywhere that we're going to monetize the system will be tr fully transparent to the user, right? So that's very important. No, we're never going to sell your personal data to anyone else because this is something that you know you don't want to do it's not it doesn't make it sustainable at the end of the day right we want to make sure that y we you trust us so we're going to be transparent about how we make money i think there are better business models than what exists today or what we did in the past right that uh, that align better between whatever the business is and the user right so there are some better business models the fact that we're putting physicians and patients on the same platform this is a $450 billion industry. Yeah. I mean, this is huge. If you can streamline that, right, take some of all this, what's going on right now offline, which is a lot of friction, it takes a lot of time, it's very expensive, and virtualize it and help you find physicians and start interacting with them online, not, not do everything in the real world. And more than that, I mean, the new healthcare reform is pouring 32 million new Americans into the system that have insurance in the next four years. Yeah. Who is going to treat all these guys? Is the system going to grow in capacity that much in four years? It's not going to happen. So we need to create more capacity virtually, right? And I believe there are a lot of business models what you can put the patients and the physicians in the same on the same page virtually, right? So you take some of the practice to the cloud, right? And then you don't need to sell anyone's data. You don't need to do any advertising and stuff like that. You actually create the process of care elsewhere in a transparent way, add value to the system because you remove resources to the cloud and create re a real business you know, around interaction between patient and physicians, which yeah. I believe is a much better future. So at some point we might have a copay to pay if, if we spend too much time on the site or something? <laughs> I, mean, well, I, I definitely believe that the basic service needs to be yeah. uh, free always, right? So if there's a freemium model that you can actually get premium services by paying more, I think that's fair, right? Yeah. That may be fair, but the the basic service, right? I, I am ac actually committed to keeping it free because I think that there is some side effect of what we're doing that I really am passionate about because all these doctors are creating now answers and tips and guides for their patients to improve their process of care and to find more distribution and get more recognition, etc. But the byproduct of this is that all these amazing answers and tips that are created by the, some of the best doctors in the world are also available to people in India and in yeah. Ethiopia and in Kenya and in other places of that people don't even have access to doctors at all, and it, uh, but they may have access to, to a smartphone or even to the web. And this is something amazing because it doesn't require extra work from the doctor to do it. They're doing it just to do good to, to their ecosystem. So they're not doing it for philanthropic reasons, but they are creating philanthropy. They are creating a better world. So I think that the basic service should remain free forever. Right? And on top of it, we, when we can pay more in, here in the U.S. For, uh, for additional services that are premium services, that, that actually is a possibility. Very cool. Well, thanks for uh, showing it to me. It's really a remarkable service, and uh, I wish you well. Thank you. And uh, by the way, where do we learn more about it? So uh, on healthtap.com, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and are you on Twitter and Facebook? Yeah, uh, at healthtap on Twitter and healthtap on Facebook, and we are all always there, and uh, would love to answer questions, and we'd love to uh, interact with anyone that's interested. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robert.